okay, the stream started successfully. So uh, we're a couple minutes early, obviously, uh, but I'm happy that it's working without issue today. Good, thank you, Mike. All set, Madam Clerk. All set. Everyone, if you can un unmute for the roll call. Some beautiful chime. I'm, I'm waiting for my clock to stop. Hold on. Oh, very nice, Dan. Very I usually nice. stop it. <laughs> I'd like to call this meeting of the Woonsocket City Council to order for Wednesday, July 8th, 2020. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Brian. Here. Councilman Kanoya. Here. Councilman Kiffis. Here. Councilwoman Sierra. Councilman Susie. Here. Councilman Ward. Councilman Ward, you're still muted. He won't be hearing you. <laughs> Councilman, Councilman Ward. Councilman Ward. All right, well, we'll move on, Madam Clerk. President Gendron. Here. We do have a quorum. And the first and only item on the agenda is a discussion regarding the Racist Policy Review Advisory Board, Resolution 20R60, including but not limited to a discussion and review of the applicants who submitted their names to the board, uh, to the city clerk's office for consideration in serving on the board. Councilman Ward seems to be having technical difficulties, so he will rejoin us. Uh, is there anyone who would like to start the discussion Council, regarding Council President? Councilman Kenoyer. So I think um the clerk had sent out the list of uh folks that had submitted their names um uh expressing interest to serve on the, the advisory board and i believe there were 25 names in total um and what we had agreed to in the resolution was that we would have a board comprised of not less than five and not more than 11 members uh, so we have room for 11, um, and that, that obviously exceeds uh, the 25 that we uh, received will exceed that. So unfortunately, not everybody's going to be able to participate. Um, and we also indicated that the, uh, the mayor's office would have at least two individuals that uh, would be appointed. Um, and I think it's, I will be very honest with you, I don't know every single name on this list. I know a number of them, but I don't know all of them. Um, but I would just say right up front, um, I would love to see the following five individuals, at, at the very least, the following five in individuals on this uh, advisory board. And that's 
Thomas Gray, who's associated with the St. James Baptist Church, Carol, uh, Carol uh, Wilson Allen, um, Mr. Ben Lessing from Community Care Alliance, Ms. Sharon Harmon, who's affiliated with Connecting for Children and Families, uh, and Michael Harris, who's a uh, well-known individual uh, in the city. Um, and so those five people I would love to see, but uh, on the board and then anybody else, obviously, um, I'd be supportive in any way, but those five people, Thomas Gray, Carol, Ann, uh, Carol uh, Wilson Allen, Ben Lesson, Sharon Harmon, and Michael Harris, I hope we can get support for at least those five folks. Councilman, I, uh, I couldn't agree more. I think that you, um, you went right to the, the majority of the ones that I was looking at. So thank you for pointing those out. I just wanted to um, let it, make sure everyone's aware tonight, there will be no vote taken tonight. Um, this is simply for discussion purposes. And um, I think this is exactly the type of discussion. Uh, the, on Wednesday, I mean, I'm sorry, on Monday, we'll be following up with the resolution of appointment. And, um, but these are, this is the way to start. So that being said, um, are there any other comments regarding other individuals or people who, uh, Councilman Ward, I see you. Uh, um, I would just ask if, could Councilman Conyer repeat those names? I was having trouble with my audio system. Sure. Uh, Councilman Ward, I just mentioned, you know, from my perspective, and I, I'm, I'm just one person, but the, there's five individuals here in particular that I would love to see on the board. And that's uh, Thomas Gray, Carol Wilson Allen, Ben Lessing, Sharon Harmon, and Michael Harris. And just before we get too far along, Councilman Ward, I, I wanted to suggest um, Anita McGuire Forcier as well, mm -hmm. as somebody who has a lot of experience on the school committee and has dealt with um, a number of youths throughout her time on the school committee and, and some of the different organizations in the city. So I would also like to put her name forward, but I, I had wanted to add that to the to Councilman Kanoya's list. So Councilman Ward, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, I, was, I just wanted him to repeat those. Okay. Um, Council President. Councilman Brian, if Councilman Ward, are you all set? No. Okay, Councilman Brian. Uh, I think that what we're going to have is um, we're going to have a crisis of having too many qualified people here. Um, and I think that that's a great thing um, that, you know, people that are definitely well deserving to serve on this committee. I would recommend the following two names. Um, and that would be one Gene Michon, who certainly uh, is in contact with this, um, this community and, uh, the underserved of this community uh, each and every day and the work that she does certainly gives her um, a perspective that that very few of us uh, would have in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, the other one would be Carmen Busher. Carmen Busher, um, we don't have an email for her, but I know Carmen from my days of um, representing District 50 and we would have, you know, when you're walking and you're, and you're campaigning, uh, there are those where you hit a door and someone says, oh yeah, hey John, how you doing? And you walk away. And then I would get into long discussions with Carmen and we would discuss many, many things. And she was someone who I found to be um, one of those people in the district and one of those people in the city that is truly plugged in with education and plugged in with um, so many things that were going on in the city. So those are my, those are two, two names that, I wanna say that the names that um, you council president have stated and the names that um, Councilman Kanoyer have stated, I couldn't agree with more, but I just want, I would be remiss if I didn't say um, Carmen Busher and uh, Jean Michon would make uh, great additions to the committee. Uh, but like I said, I think we have the luxury of having too many people um, that, you know, want to want to serve on this on this committee. And I think that's a beautiful thing. You don't see this kind of desire to be involved every day. Um, and so I'm really happy. Um, this is the this is a good problem to have. So uh, thank you, Council President. Thank Council you. President. Mr. President. Oh. Um, I think I think Alex had it. OK, Councilman Kithis. Um, yeah, I just want to say, I mean, I definitely agree with Councilman Knoyer and Councilman Brian's um, recommendations and 
I'd like to to add, um, I think Wanda Alfakansi would be a very good addition to this board as well. She's a member of the Watch Coalition and is, you know, uh, really active in, um, you know, in, in community organizing in, uh, you know, in a lot of the, the work of advocating for communities of color. Um, and I'd also like to add Megan Gifford. Uh, I don't know if you all remember, she um, had organized a an event. Oh God, was it? It was sometime last fall um, in the park regarding uh, suicide awareness. Um, and, you know, I, she is, I she and I graduated together uh, and she's active in the community as well. So uh, I'd like to put forth those two names. Okay, thank you. Mr. President. Councilman Susi. Yeah, I, I also agree with that. We, we were so fortunate uh, that uh, we've had a, a real uh, good choices here. The, the people have really responded and I, I, I think that's a wonderful thing. It's exactly what we wanted, right? Um, exactly. I would put forth, the, and I agree with all the names so far, and I would, I know this woman uh, uh, well, Gigi Dezonia. Gigi uh, was previously known as Gigi Colson, but Gigi is, uh, Gigi literally worked with Mother Teresa in, uh, in Calcutta, uh, and I've known her for many years. I did a lot of fundraising for her when she ran a, an organization called IPAY, which was micro lending for, uh, for, uh, for, for women, uh, minority women, whether it be in India or here in the United States. Um, but she's just a really wonderful, <laughs> really a, a saintly person in many regards that I would strongly recommend. I think she, if you look into her history, she's, uh, she's as pure as it gets. So, um, and also the, I think Teresa Curtin, is that the, I think, was that Colonel uh, Harmon? Is that the one that Teresa Curtin had recommended? And if she wanted to yes, take her it, it Okay, great, because that'd be perfect as well. So those are my two really strong ones, in addition to what has already been stated, so. Excellent. Thank you. Thank well, you. if, if so, my council president, if my count gets me right, we're already at 11. Wow. Um, okay. So we will have to. Uh, That's perfect. Obviously, well, except that the mayor gets two appointments. <laughs> so we may have to um, wean this down unless some of these appointments were appointments that the mayor would have made anyways. Right. Um, so as long as they're appointed, but we'll have to, these are good names for consideration. So I, I think that, um, Madam Clerk, if you can let the record reflect that Councilwoman Sierra has shown up. Oh. Wow, that's a, quite an entrance. Yes, yes. So um, that being said, I I, uh, I think this is where it gets difficult. As Councilman Brian pointed out, um, we were blessed with 25 people who want to serve, which is a, a an unusual situation in the city of Woonsocket, yes. having 25 people willing to, to serve on a board like this. But I think it, it speaks volumes, uh, to the integrity of the city too. So I think um, now that we've, we're getting to narrowing it down, it gets more difficult because obviously it'd be nice to appoint all 25. So that being said, um, are there any other comments regarding people who would be of consideration based on uh, your knowledge. Council President. Councilman Kithis. I was just wondering if we could repeat, all of us could repeat the names we recommended so Councilwoman Sierra knows. How about if I just, if I go through the list, I'll say who each one. Um, so Councilwoman Sierra, just so you're um, with us. Uh, yeah. Jim, Councilman Knoyer recommended Thomas Gray. Carol Wilson Allen, Ben Lessing, uh, Sharon Harmon, and Michael Harris. Um, then Alex, uh, Councilman Kithis recommended, um, I'm sorry, Councilman, the Wando. Afakansi. Yeah. Thank you. And Megan Gifford. And then Councilman Susi recommended Gigi Zazonia. And uh, he also mentioned uh, Colonel ha Harmon. Then John, uh, Councilman Brian recommended Carmen Boucher and Jean Michon. I recommended Anita Maguire Forcier. And that's all of the recommendations we have thus far. So that brings us to 11. Again, the, the, as I pointed out in the beginning, this is not a vote. We will not be voting tonight. But these are the recommendations for bringing forth a resolution on Monday. 
Um, those are the those are eleven names that have been recommended this far. And as I said, the mayor gets two appointments, so we may have to whittle our portion down a little bit, unless the mayor was appointing some of these. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Council President. Councilwoman Sierra. I, I obviously have the list as well. And I really, I, I know most of the names. I don't obviously know everybody, you know, intimately on the list, but I too would recommend Anita Maguire Forcia and Jeannie Nishan. Those are two people that I do know very well and would be very comfortable recommending, although I have no objection to anyone else on the list. How could you, right? Yeah. Right, they are all big, great people coming forward to help us out with this. Right. It really is amazing turnout. So yes, I can't say any of them are bad. <laughs> Very good. Are there any other comments? Uh, Council President. Councilman Ward. Um, uh, I, I have to agree with you. I think the, the list is full of very qualified and interesting people, um, having done a little bit of homework on some of them. I haven't gotten to all of them, but um, I'm satisfied with the recommendations so far. Um, I, I would only add, and only because maybe I don't know enough, but I do know some, um, I would like to add Rufus Bailey to that. Um, but I could also very strongly support Anita McGuire Force here, Carmen Boucher, Sharon Harmon, uh, Tom Gray, um, Karen Wilson Allen. They're all very well qualified um, and would hope that we can whittle this down to a proper size and uh, get a good committee to go off and do this work. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think we need to, that brings us to 12. So I think we, um, we're going to have to find a way to bring us down to at least to the 11 and then in consultation with the mayor, um, make sure that the people that she was going to appoint are included in the 11 and we can uh, make sure that the appointments are complete. But uh, any suggestions? Um, Council President. Councilman Ward. Just, just the suggestion that when the mayor uh, in, gives us an indication of who she would want to have on the committee out of the list, that we could um, take those that are selected and I, I well recommended and simply poll the group and see who comes out on top in terms of um, support. I don't know any easier way. I mean, you can't, it's hard to pick if, but if five people would like this one person, we should go with that one person. Yep, agreed. And if only two, then only two, and we don't. Um, but I'm not sure any simpler way to do it. Okay. Councilman Brian, I think you're, you're muted though. You're muted. Thank you, Council President. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, well, certainly, I don't think any one of us uh, are, you know, I think we'd be loath to say, well, you know what, I made that recommendation, so, but actually I want to recant that recommendation. I mean, I agree with what the Council, what, what Council Ward is saying, um, but it may be as simple as, seriously, if we have 13 names, we have 14 names, um, and we're all steadfastly behind those people, it may just be drawing the names out of the hat. And the first 11 people to come out of that hat are on that board. I mean, unless they want to, you know, unless they, unless they're contacted and say, you know, um, you're giving an opportunity to, if you really want to serve, then it's how we're going to do it. Otherwise, you know, you could withdraw your name if you so choose. I, I don't really know how else to do it. I don't want to turn it and I certainly understand what Councilman Ward's saying, but I don't, I don't know if I, I want to turn it into an election. I, it, it may just be, um, we have too many qualified people for a certain amount of seats and we may have to just go with a simple game of chance. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how else, I don't know how else to do it um, to, to make it as fair as possible because I mean, everybody here recommended the, some the person that or persons that 
they like or want to serve because they have their reasons. And, you know, I don't think any of us want to say, well, you know what, actually, I, that person can, you can forget that recommendation. I mean, I don't think any of us want to do that. So no. I just want to, you know, I just want to, I just don't know what another, another fair way to do it. Okay. So that's my two cents. So thank you, Council President. Thank you. Mr. Mr. President. Who is, who is uh, Mr. Councilman Susi? Yeah. I'm just thinking, I mean, if we have that many good qualified people, we also, as a, we can change the number. We, I mean, we went to 13 and we can go to 13. I don't think it's, it's an impossible thing. If we really feel that the people that are presented before us to that are good, then I think we, we could have that discussion on Monday that certainly that would allow us to go to 13. I mean, heaven forbid, right? Uh, well, I think that's always an option, but I would, um, I would like to, because what happens, I think if we open it to 13, um, then you may hear somebody say, well, you know what? I'd like John Smith too, as long as we're, and we could, we could find this getting to a committee of 25. So I think that the, the resolution was set at seven to 11. And I think those are reasonable numbers. If, if we can make it work, I think we might be better off staying with a, a finite number, but maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe we will have to expand it, but let's, um, have the discussion uh, yeah. about finding out if if there is a way to get to the eleven. Um, and once we and see what the mayor has, you're right. Maybe maybe the same people that she has thinking as well. So that'll help, you know. So. Well, and so what I what I think is is let's let's move forward. If we can end tonight, where we can figure out how we want to approach it. Um, if we get to where we know eleven people. And I don't expect, as Councilman Brian said, I don't expect anyone to say, well, I'll withdraw a name. Um, but if we, if we have a way that we decide to get to 11, and if the mayor says that there was somebody additional that she wanted to appoint, then we'll just have to use that same criteria to bring it down to 10 or to nine to meet um, the mayor's appointments as well. So for instance, as I'm saying, if, if, if the mayor wanted to appoint um, Gigi Dazonier and Anita McGuire Forcier, if she was going to make those two appointments, at least the two people that we've already recommended, um, and so that would we still only have to get the list to eleven. But I think we need to yeah, figure yeah. out a way because we could we could chase this all the way up to twenty five. Council President, Councilman Kiffis, I, I actually so I agree with Councilman Susi, and I would actually go further and say that I don't necessarily see, like, I, I actually think there's an argument to be made for, for expanding this to include everybody who applied, um, knowing that the work that they're going to have to do, it, it, there, there's a lot of material to go through, going through the entire, um, all of our laws and process stuff and, and just in a relatively short amount of time. So I, um, I, I actually think it could be a good idea if we were to expand the number to um, well, it's 25, but I actually just, I saw an email right before opening that I think um, Terry Curtin threw her name. So right. that was 24, but um, she did that knowing, you know, that there was a limited number. It's possible she would rescind that if, if she knew that we were going to expand the number, if my idea is something that's popular. Um, so I, I think there may be an argument for doing that, knowing that that would allow the board to divide up the work possibly, or um, uh, just, just sort of sort of knowing that that would allow them to dig a little deeper and in the two, just over two months that they would have after this, um, after the board get membership approved. Um, and that way, you know, the issue, the issue with who the mayor would appoint would end up not being a concern because any of the people on the list that she would want would already be included in the board. The only reason I think I uh, just, just uh, if, if for no other reason from my experience, um, I think that it, the larger the groups get, the more difficult it is to manage a group. And I, I sit on some other committees where the groups are a little bit larger. They're more in the, in the realm of 10 to, uh, you know, 11 to 13. And it gets a little bit cumbersome. Compound that with the situation we're in right now, having to do things remotely, I think it only gets worse. So um, I, I, I have never found a large committee to be as effective as a good small committee. 
um, in any in any committee at all. I, I think that it just gets it gets um, way too awkward when you have if if we had 24 people uh, participating, just to call that meeting to order uh, would require a, a 13 people every time to to show up just to have a quorum. But, I mean, council president. Who else? Who? It was somebody council else say something. Councilman Ward. Yes. Um, okay. In in regards to my selection process, I'm going to uh, agree with Councilman Brand. It's probably not the best idea to set up a lobbying risk and, and looking <laughs> for votes and things like that. Um, probably would be best to get random. However, uh, I do agree that. When you, and I'm going to think that the time frame once this group organizes, the time scale will have to probably expand because of the scope of what's being considered. Um, so we need to consider the fact that the, the amount of work being asked of them may be a little overwhelming for even 11 people. I would simply point out that. If we do have a desire to expand this to 13, 15, I'm not sure how high I would go, but it would probably end up being broken down into subgroups that would take categories and do work where they would have an interest, whether it's in personnel or legislative or charter or promotional policies and things, all of those things, each individual groups asking questions and collecting information. Um, so I, I could see a, 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 a valid basis for consideration of expansion. Um, the, uh, what I would simply say though, on top of that then is, do we want to consider as primary candidates, those who actually reside in the city and have expressed an interest? Cause some of the people who have expressed an interest are affiliated with organizations within the city and do much work with um, various communities throughout the city, but they don't live here. And it's not to say that that's a bad thing, but it's a thing. And I guess the question is, if there are that many good qualified people and they live here and they are involved in those various communities also, do we want to consider giving preference to our residents? Um, so a res residency requirement. Well, uh, 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 yeah, I don't know if I'd call it a requirement. I would just say a preference. Um, not not because somebody from out of town doesn't know the city. Many of them do and have worked here many, many years. I'm just pointing it out as as maybe a, a an item of, uh, as, as a criteria for differentiation. Um, because I, I, can, I can envision this being, I could see five groups of three people working on various topics split out and still struggling to collect enough information to get to, to find out <clears throat> sort of the question that's being asked of them. So I think we need to have an open mind about expansion to a point, consider whether or not we want to give preference to those people who reside in the city, um, who are eminently well qualified and meet the kind of criteria we're looking for in terms of their experience and exposure to issues that we're looking at and and then get it going and confer with them appropriately appropriately often enough to understand whether or not their deadline is is possible impossible um or in the best interests of achieving the goal is this hired to do or volunteering to serve. thank you mr council president who is that councilman Kanoya? Was there somebody else? Was that? Yes, I was. I was just going to say something, but go ahead, Jim. Who? No, you go ahead. Oh, con I'm sorry, solicitor. Go ahead, uh, Mr. President, uh, members of the uh, council. I, I would just like to say that in my experience, uh, vast experience with committees, normally, uh, you know, the general rule is that the larger the committee, the less productive it becomes. Uh, I just thought I would say that, and also I think the council deliberated on seven to eleven. They pass the resolution, and if you keep changing, if you keep changing the 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 start date, you you may never get this committee formed. So, I just thought I would just add that uh, along with what the president said. Um, 
large committees are normally not very productive. They just aren't. I think 11 is, is, is large. Anyway, if you go beyond that, I think you're going to run into other problems that you're not foreseeing right now. But I just, awesome. my two cents. So, that's okay. So, Council, thank you, Solicitor. Councilman Kanoya. Um, so, I was going to say a couple things. Um, we, <clears throat> we as a group, I think, are at 12 people right now. There's a chance um, the mayor, her two selections, could be outside this group, and then we'd be dealing with 14. Or if she has only one other person outside of this group, we'd be at 13. Um, so having said all that, I, I tend to, uh, I, I agree completely with the solicitor. I believe, and that was one of my concerns in the beginning, and we did open it up to have a discussion when we, we uh, passed the resolution as to whether or not we wanted to increase the size of this committee. Um, and I think there's a risk it becomes uh, unwieldy and un inefficient. I do recognize as Councilman Ward said, and I, I had the same thought, you know, the, the, the divide and conquer approach, but I also think, and I'm hopeful that a number of these people have thought, uh, you know, we, to be honest with you, we've been, I shouldn't say we, I'll, I'll, I'll speak for myself. Um, I received a lot of feedback over the last several months or more about this type of stuff and policies that we have to change. So I, frankly, I'm hopeful that a lot of these people already come in with their list ready to go because there's been a lot of, a lot of assertions that we have policies that need to be fixed. So um, I'm hoping that the work is not as, as arduous as, as Councilman Ward suggested it could be. I'm not saying it won't be, but I'm hoping they have, a, they have their list. Um, so I would rather stick to 11, but having said that, I'd be willing to move to 13. Um, but I don't think, I don't think, I don't think moving beyond the 13 um, would be a good thing to do because I just think it would become very, very cumbersome, but that's just my view. Council President? Councilman Kithis. Um, so <clears throat> I, I have similar experiences as the solicitor in terms of that large groups trying to do work together tend to step on each other's toes and whatever. However, I, I think Councilman Ward's suggestions are, are good. The idea of dividing up into smaller groups, as I, as I had said earlier, um, and, and taking on specific, more specific either departments or specific parts of, parts of our code of ordinances and charter or whatever. Um, I did wanna ask Council President, uh, and unless I, and actually, and Councilman Kenora, unless I remember incorrectly, we don't have like a prescription in terms of the types of rules or of, of order that this board would have to follow, right? So it's possible, like they could self-organize and, and impose rules of order that would work for them that might allow them the flexibility to divide up as they see um, or divide up to conduct the meetings that, you know, in a way that might be a little more conducive to being done over Zoom, um, right? Like I, I think that- Yeah, that could, that's, yeah that's, you're absolutely correct, uh, uh, Council McKibbis. They, they have to, they're gonna elect their own chairperson and it's their, it's their board. They will yeah. run it uh, the way they see fit. They'll, they'll establish their own rules of order and, and operate. I mean, we are out of this. We're just, our only job is to establish the board, let them go do their work. They come back to us with a written report at the end of this with the various findings and recommendations. And then it's our job to take those findings and recommendations, uh, assess them and take action where we, where we deem it to be appropriate. Um, but you're absolutely correct. They, they, will, they will operate just as they see fit and they can divide and conquer. They can set up subcommittees, they can do however they want, but they will have to kind of work within the confines of the Open Meetings Act and everything else the way we do. Um, so I, I, again, I think you, you'll end up, if you had a, and let me have a quick question, if you don't mind, uh, uh, Councilman Kippis, to the solicitor. If we had a board, for example, of 25, what would, constitute a quorum solicitor you're muted. You're, you're muted you're solicitor D. Simone okay there you go you got me, you got me now yes. yeah 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 the, the quorum the quorum would be 13 yeah see that, that's that's the risk I think 
that, you know, trying to get, because my guess is you're not always going to be, able, when they have meetings, they're not always, not everyone's always going to be able to show up. There will be times um, where they won't be able to all show up. And then you'll have to cancel a meeting unless you get all 13, I mean, at least 13 of them there. Whereas if you have 11, the quorum is uh, what, six? Six. six. Yeah. So, so, Councilman Kithis, you have the floor. Yeah, so I just, uh, I wanted to make one more point and then revisit what Councilman Canorio said. Um, uh, and now, it, well, I guess to, in, in response to what Councilman Canoyer said, I, I actually don't know, would this committee be, this board be subject to the open meetings law? I mean, it's not, it's not a, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. That it would I, I believe it would oh, be. Yeah, it would be. be. Yeah. Um, so, if, if uh, oh, I'm sorry, Councilman Kittis, are you done? No, you, you go ahead. No, I, again, I, my view is we follow up with the mayor, see where she is. If, if she's good with this list, then we have a hard task to eliminate someone. If she wants to add one more, I would be comfortable with adding two, so we, we're at 13, but I, I, I'd have a hard time going beyond 13. And then 13 would require a quorum of seven. Um, so I think that's a, to me, that's a fair compromise. Yeah. Com so, uh, Council President. You still have the floor, Councilman Kivis. Okay, so quickly to the solicitor, um, just to the, other, to the other point you brought up, just so I can kind of close that, um, we could potentially, and correct me if I'm wrong, Introduce a resolution. Oh, it's Wednesday night. Never mind. Um, never mind. I, so, if if we were to expand the size of this, it would have to be done at a, at a future. Yeah, you, you could just do a new resolution, amend the old one. Yeah, but it, because not, the deadline has passed for the next week's meeting. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we'll just do well, another one. Well, lo looking at the Open Meetings Act, though, it specifically says that a public a public body, any department, agency, commission, committee, board, council, bureau, or authority or any subdivision thereof of state or municipal government or any library that is funded at least 25% of operational budget in the prior year, prior budget year with public funds. So because this board is not paid, I actually may be the case that it's not regulated by the Open Meetings Act. Well, we can look into it, but I would submit that uh, it's a board that was created by the city council and uh, it should abide by the, by the Open Meetings Law. I don't think- yeah, I would. There, there are some boards that don't have any funding and they, they adhere to the uh, yeah. open meetings law. I would think we, that we could be making boards every day to circumvent the open meetings law if right. that were the case. Yeah. I mean, we've never had a board, be it the dog, dog, dog park committee or otherwise, that hasn't been subject to the, um, to the OMA. Yeah. So, so in that case then, if we were to either encourage that if, if we were to expand the size of the board as Councilman and I had been talking about, um, then self-governance within the board may be a little more difficult. They may not be able to subdivide the work or um, we may run into issues there. So we may need to pass another resolution anyway in order to codify whatever their, whatever their desired self-organization is, even whatever the size of the board, whether it does stay 11 or so, so Councilman Kithis, to your point, um, I think what I would be comfortable doing is if we, if we could either get it to the 11 to accommodate the 11 that we, you know, we'd have to eliminate somebody, which is going to be a tough thing. Um, if we, if we had to go to 13 to accommodate the mayor's selection and the 12 that we've already got, if, if 13 works, I guess, reluctantly, I could um support that if that's what the, the wishes of the board are but i think if before we do anything more than that i'd like to see this group organize um set up their rules of order and if they find that there's a shortcoming down the road and that they they either need more people to create subcommittees or whatever that is something that they could come to us in one of their reports and address that um they feel that the number of 13 is, is inadequate. Um, I certainly don't want to handcuff the process, but by the same token, I don't want to create a board that is so ineffective 
that we waste everybody's time and, and nothing gets accomplished. I want to see real accomplishments, real progress, real solutions with this board. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is I could see myself supporting to 13 to be able to accommodate everybody that, that has been selected thus far. Um, but I would really have a hard time going beyond that unless the board itself, you know, collectively made those suggestions. Council President. Who is that? Me, Alex. Oh, yeah. Councilman Kithis. Uh, so I just, so I guess, I guess I just, a uh, logistical question. So is our intention to draft this ordinance with our recommendations, whatever they may be, by like tonight and, or tomorrow morning so that we are within the deadline of next Monday's meeting? Well, the clerk has already saved a spot for me um, for these so that, because okay. the deadline is already passed. Mm -hmm. But the clerk has, knowing that this meeting was taking place, has worked with me to um, make an exception this time and save the spot for these appointments so that we can make the appointments for Monday. Okay. Um, so it, it was it was kind of the only way we could get, the deadline was the seventh, um, hold the meeting and then have it on for, the, for Monday's meeting. So the clerk was good enough to um, <clears throat> flex a little bit on the deadline and just held those spots for the appointments. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, All right. I mean, I, I would definitely, in my view, I, I think I would support an expansion of the board to 13 and um, in, you know, in waiting for the mayor's recommendations to see, um, to see if, if we would have to pare it down by one at that point. Oh. Council President. Councilman Kanoya. Can I make a suggestion? Um, we have, we've identified 12 people at the moment. Um, I think it makes sense for you to follow up with the mayor. It, uh, tell her who the 12 people are that we've discussed this evening. If she has one more outside of this 12, then I think we're done. We're at 13. If she doesn't add anybody, maybe we still go to 13. So is there one other name on here that... Uh, Let's not somebody... open that up, Councilman. Okay. okay. So then we got to because... eliminate one. Because then if the mayor, yeah, but, no, let's, let's not have any more names because it just gets more difficult if we have to take a name away. Well, I would, I would, I was, the, 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 it would be a name that only goes on if we go to 13, but that's fine. Either way, I don't care. We have 12 right now. Yeah. And I think that we can always make an additional appointment. If we, if we decide to expand to 13, the mayor is, is already accepted two of these as her appointments will say. Um, we can always make an additional appointment at our meeting in August if we're one short. Or if somebody um, ends up not accepting the appointment, we can always um, okay. fill the slot like we would on any yep. other one. Any other comments? That being said, I will I will follow up with the mayor. I will um, send her an email with the names that are recommended by the city council. Um, we'll see if the mayor had an additional selection or two, and then we can make the. Um, what would we like to do for Monday's meeting, though? If we, if there is a desire to expand to thirteen, or do we appoint eleven? Um, and then make the expansion and appoint two more. Council President. Councilman Brian. Uh, I mean, I think that rather than rather than entertain that at this moment, I think it would be um, it would be wise and it would behoove you to um, confer with the mayor to see. Uh, but there may be some overlap. So if there's overlap, then the the conversation's moved. So okay. Um, you know, so let's let's see where let's cross that bridge uh, when we get to it, as they say. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So then we're not going to make an expansion for Monday because I, I was going to plead with the city clerk to allow another um, resolution for that. But if if we don't have to, I I will not make that. We'll just have to limit our appointments to eleven. Well, under an abundance of caution, you could have it in the queue in case it's needed, but it may not be needed. 
So, Madam Clerk, I may use up another favor. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in the queue, Madam uh, Secretary. Yeah. In the queue. Council okay. President. Thank you. Councilwoman Sierra. Could you just name the other two as uh, potential alternates if you had yeah. to? I like that. It would still be a, um, we'd still have to change the resolution. We will, okay. So, because okay. it, it's, you know, e either way, and you know what? I've sat as an alternate. Um, I, I would hate to put people in those positions. If we're going to do it, let's make them full uh, appointments because um, having sat, uh, well, I, I sat on the zoning board where we had alternates and it is very frustrating sometimes for an alternate, alternate because there are limited powers and um, it's sometimes it's like being half a member. Council President. Get this. I, I just wanted to uh, make a request of the solicitor that we should we should certainly get a, a ruling or, or something like that to make absolutely sure that we know whether and to what extent this is regulated by the OMA because um, I, I think there's going to be I'm going to guess there's going to be a strong desire of the board to want to divide up some of the work and therefore not necessarily be meeting um, all simultaneously and obviously if they are um, if they are subject to the OMA, they, they may hinder that. Um, there, and, and in that case, there may be simple ways around it, like creating, allow it, like by resolution, creating multiple sub boards or something like that. Once the board has has already been formed, and you know, or I just I think that we should we should definitely have these things in the backs of our minds and know for sure whether how how the state will view this, just so that. Um, and also and also with all of this knowing that um should any of this be the case and especially if anything has to be done in our august meeting um and we don't just do it by special meeting earlier we may definitely need to extend the deadline uh, i think that i think council that president ask. is that councilman Kithis? council councilman ward council president councilman ward uh, okay um, Councilman Kith, this is just a quick look up of the definitions from the Open Meetings Act. Uh, it does mention that um, a public body means any department, agency, commission, committee, board, council, bureau, or authority, or any subdivision thereof. And so this this commission or, or board or advisory committee, um, if they do break into subdivisions, as we indicate they may, uh, under the definitions of the Open Meetings Act, would be subject to the same open meeting laws as the full advisory board would be, at least the way this reads. And it's pretty plain reading um, that uh, that it would probably, in, in very high likelihood, that we would be subject to the open meetings law. If I, if I may, uh, Mr. President, I, I certainly will look into it more deeply, but I can't imagine how it would not be a subject to the open meetings law. But I will certainly look into it further. Okay. Solicitor. Thank you. Or Councilman the President. Yes, Councilman Kithis. So if then if if Councilman Ward that is true, then they would be it would be subject to like a quorum rules based on the size of the subdivision. Is that right? Uh, I'm sorry. We'll, so if there were subdivisions, say say we expand the board to 13 and they break up into into I don't know. Uh, groups of five. Seven, three, or yeah, or two, two groups of five and one group of three. Are they subject yeah. to smaller quorums? That's right, right? Well, you, you need a quorum to do official business. But if, but if you do a subcommittee, um, I could look into that. We may, you may not need a quorum of the subcommittee, depending on whether or not there's going to be a vote taken. Uh, they, they could be doing uh, tedious work and, and uh, research and compiling information, that may not necessarily have to be a quorum of a subcommittee. But, you know, I'd have to look into that further. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are subcommittees of, of boards that do work without taking votes. If they're not taking a vote, then they may not need, they may not need a quorum, but I, I, I'd have to sharpen up my, uh, my knowledge of that. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? I, uh, Council President. 
Councilman Kithis. I just want to thank the clerk for any any of the publishing requirements that are going to be uh, involved with this board and the potential subboards, like you know, like meeting notifications requirements and stuff. Thank you in advance for <laughs> all of the additional work you're going to have. Um, yeah, it's it's appreciated. No problem. We'll get it done. Wait till you get your Christmas bonus this year. <laughs> Any other comments? Hearing none, Councilman Ward. Council President, this lengthy discussion but meaningful effort being concluded for the evening, I make the motion to adjourn. Motion made by Second. Councilman Kithis. Ward, seconded by Councilman Susie, I think. Correct. Kithis. 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 Roll call, Madam Clerk, on the adjournment. Councilman Brian? Yes. Councilman Kanoya? Yes. Councilman Kithis? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilman Susie? Yes, and the reason my video is not up is because I'm at the beach and it's, it's it, it, it wouldn't be pretty right now. So, yeah. <laughs> Councilman Ward? Uh, yes. President Gendron? Yes, and this meeting is adjourned at 7.50. Thank awesome. you, everybody. Good job, guys. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.